Hi, we're in packet 5.1 mid segments, perpendicular bisectors, angle bisector, circumcenter, and in center, part of unit 5 relationships in triangles. In this packet, in this topic, we're going to consider two um, questions in particular. How can I construct the largest circle contained within a given triangle? So a circle in a triangle, and how can I construct the smallest circle which contains a given triangle? So how can I construct a triangle within a circle. Okay, there are going to be some new terms here. The triangle mid-segment, a segment connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, a perpendicular bisector, a line that divides segments into two equal parts, bisector, and is perpendicular to the segment, so it forms a 90 degree angle, an angle bisector, a line that divides an angle into two equal parts, so again, bi meaning two equal parts. Circumcenter, the point at which three perpendicular bisectors intersect a triangle, and it has some interesting properties we're going to study. And the in-center, the point at which three angle bisectors intersect in a triangle. Also, that one has some interesting properties that we're going to be studying. So as usual, I uh, summarize the key uh, theorems uh, in this packet, so you can use this as a reference. We're going to we're going to study the mid-segment of a triangle, so we're going to construct a mid-segment, and we're going to determine from that um, some properties in a triangle. So again, we're, we're expanding our knowledge of triangles here. We're discovering new properties of triangles, uh, and in particular, we're doing that by drawing additional lines within the triangle, and then determining what happens and what the relationship is between sides and angles following uh, that line that we drew, and there are different types of line, four different types of lines in particular that we're going to be studying. We're going to review the right triangle. Of course, we know this already. We know the Pythagorean theorem, but it's good to review it, and also to remember that the hypotenuse is always the side that's opposite that right angle over here. So we're going to study something called the perpendicular bisector theorem, and it's going to prove very important, this perpendicular bisector theorem, which we're going to derive using the HL theorem that we already know, right? The HL theorem, the hypotenuse leg theorem, which is one of the theorems that help us determine whether triangles are congruent, right? We're going to derive this, this theorem from the previous theorem that we knew. Uh, and that is often the case that you can derive, and it's easier to derive new theorems than to memorize them. But here we have the perpendicular bisector theorem, and we're going to use that perpendicular bisector theorem when we study what is called the circumcenter. And sadly, you can't see that over here, but the circumcenter is the center of a, a, a circle which encompasses, which contains a triangle, okay? And we're going to use properties of the perpendicular bisector to determine that, right? To be able to construct that circle. And then we're going to study the angle bisector in particular and some properties of that angle bisector. And why are we doing that? Because we're going to use that angle bisector to construct an in-center. That's a point at which the angle bisectors all intersect. That's this point over here. And it too has some very interesting and neat properties. So that's basically what we're going to be doing in this topic. So let's go to the first uh, part over here. So over here what we're doing is we're studying different lines, different lines that I can draw within a triangle, right? I know what a triangle is, but <clears throat> and we've studied the lengths of the sides and the angles and compared them and used that to derive theorems to determine whether triangles are congruent or similar. But now what we're going to do is we're going to derive additional properties, some fun features of triangles, by drawing additional lines within those triangles. And the first, thing we're, first one we're going to draw is the mid-segment. So a mid-segment is a segment that joins the midpoints, the midpoints, right, of two sides of a triangle. So if I wanted to construct that over here, I'd have a point here, which I'd call D. I'm not measuring it out precisely, right? I'm just sketching it, right? D is the midpoint of A, B over here. Now, if I have another point, <clears throat> excuse me, E over here, which I'd say is the midpoint of this segment over here. And again, I have to use two tick marks, but I, because I don't want to insinuate that these two side lines are the same, right? This line segment, BE, is congruent to line segment EC only. Well, if I connect those like this, if I were to connect those like this, and I should use a, a straight edge for that, right? That would be neater. So let's use that. Let's use a straight edge. If I connect those like that, um, I have 
uh, drawn the mid segment and we're going to drive some interesting properties from this triangle or from in fact the two triangles that we have now drawn over here um, that follow from um, the definition of a mid segment then we have the perpendicular nut bisector again a new line that we're going to be drawing within the triangle so a line segment array that divides the segment into two equal that's what by means over here two equal parts see two equal parts by sector and is perpendicular to the sec segment perpendicular right forms a 90 degree angle so basically if i take this segment over here i can divide it into two equal parts like this so i'll just this will be two equal parts right so this is this part is congruent to that part over there and now i'm going to construct and we know how to do that right we know how to construct it i'm just sketching it here but we know how to construct it this would be my perpendicular bisector right so it's a line that's perpendicular to another line and divides it into two equal parts okay so that's a line that we can draw within a triangle and we're going to use it to derive new properties of that triangle Let's try another line, the angle bisector, a line segment array that divides an angle into two equal parts. Right? Again, by meaning equal. Okay, so what does that look like? Let's take this angle over here. It's an angle bisector. And so an angle uh, bisector would be a line or array. So I'll draw a ray over here. Again, I'm just sketching it. I'm not constructing it. I'm sketching it, so it's probably not precise. So this is a ray. So this would be an angle bisector if it divides this angle into two equal parts. Okay, that's what an angle bisector is. Again, another line we can draw within a triangle, right, which is going to help us derive new properties of triangles. And then we have the median over here, right, a segment that connects what? A vertex, a vertex, which is the point at which two lines intersect. Over here, that's a vertex, that's a vertex, that's a vertex. So the vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side, to the midpoint of the opposite side, right? So if I take this vertex over here, I'm going to want to join it to the midpoint of the opposite side. So it's going to go through the midpoint. So let's find the midpoint of this side would be probably somewhere over here. So this is equal to that. It's the midpoint, right? So I'm going to join those two like this. And that would be, this over here would be my median. So median is a a line segment right it's a line segment here we go it joined the vertex with the midpoint of the opposite side then we have the altitude over here okay so another line we're going to draw within a triangle a segment right that connects a vertex again we're connecting a vertex of a triangle to the opposite side so that it is perpendicular perpendicular to that side so now we're going to start in vertex over here so let's take vertex over here b and all we want to do is we want to draw a line that's straight down perpendicular to the opposite side okay so wherever that may fall right so i'm going to draw it straight down like this like that okay so that is my altitude this is an altitude now notice that this segment over here so this piece over here is not necessarily the same length as this one over here Okay, where it was over here, right, when I constructed the median. Okay, so now we have all the lines that we're going to draw within those circles. We have the mid-segment, perpendicular bisector, angle bisector, median, and altitude. And now we're going to see what we can do with them. What happens when these guys intersect, when they cross over each other? It turns out they all cross over each other in one point. So the circumcenter is the point at which the perpendicular perpendicular bisectors intersect in a triangle. So it turns out if you construct the perpendicular bisectors, and we know what they are, right? The perpendicular bisectors over here, this would be a perpendicular bisector, right? This is a perpendicular, you can, it, it would extend out like that, right? You, you can, you can keep drawing it out. This is a piece of it. There's a line segment, which is a perpendicular bisector. Why? Because it's perpendicular to this side and it bisects it into two equal parts, right? This is also the perpendicular bisector over here, as is this. And it turns out that they, they all join at one point, right? They all intersect at one point. And that point M over here is called the circumcenter, okay? So it's the center of a circle on the outside of that triangle, as we're going to find out. 
And then we have the in-center. It's another interesting point. The point at which the three angle bisectors intersect in a triangle. So here I have the three angle bisectors. This is an angle bisector. This is an angle bisector. This is an angle bisector because they divide their angles into equal parts. Well, it turns out they intersect at one point inside the triangle, and that is called the in-center. Okay, it's going to be very instrumental in drawing a circle inside the triangle. And then you have the centroid over here, and the centroid is the point at which the three medians, right? And the median is the point that joins a vertex with the midpoint of the opposite side. So the three medians intersect in a triangle. So we have this point over here. This is a median. This is a median. And this is a median over here. So it's a, a line that joins a vertex with the midpoint of the opposite side. Well, it turns out that they all intersect in one point. And that point we're going to call a centroid, which also has very interesting features. And then finally, we have the orthocenter. It's the point at which the three altitudes, altitudes intersect in a triangle, right? And the altitudes were drawn perpendicular to the opposite side, right? So this by is not necessarily congruent to yc. I did not state that. All I stated was that this line is perpendicular to the opposite side. So is this one, so is this one. And they intersect at the orthocenter. So let's go to the next page over here. And here we have the triangle mid-segment theorem. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, since I want to make sure that I have enough time for this one, I'm going to I'm going to start another video for that one.